Oh my, we've got a man down over in the corner. I repeat, there's a man down. He's holding his head and looking a little woozy. Mia, we seem to have one of these incidents every year and it burns me every time. Somebody wants to be a clown and drink from the lab equipment. Not really funny now, is it? This place is no place to be eating or drinking anything. These chemicals can kill you if they're ingested accidentally. Fortunately, they aren't working with any toxic chemicals today or this could have been more serious. It will put them out of the game, and it will hurt the team with the judges at least. Yep, I have just received a note. The judges have penalized Roosevelt five points. Looks like he'll be on the disable list for a while. It's probably safe to say that when you're in the lab, you shouldn't put anything in your mouth. Safe to say and safe to do. When you're in the lab, don't taste the chemicals and don't drink out of the equipment. Well, he seems to be recuperating a bit, and our action really seems to be heating up. Yeah, and speaking of heating up, over there is somebody getting ready to light a Bunsen burner. Oh, she sure is. What do we need to look for here? Look for an explosion if you do this wrong. The most important thing to remember is to light the match before you turn the gas on. Why is that? What if you turn the gas on and then have trouble getting the match to light? You strike and strike, and all this gas is being discharged into the air. Well, by the time you get the match to light, boom! All the gas in the air ignites and explodes. Then we may be talking burns and blindness. She's using good technique here. The match is up, the match is lit, and it's a good light. The judge is rated a 9.89. That should help them get some of those lost points back. I guess we should mention some other things about dealing with a burner. Well, yeah, like if you're heating chemicals in a test tube or anything else, make sure the open end isn't pointing at you or anyone else, because it could shoot out like Old Faithful. And one more thing, Mia. Do you know how to tell hot glass from cold glass just by looking at it? I'm afraid I don't. Well, you shouldn't be afraid, but you should be cautious, because you can't tell by looking at it. Hot glass looks just like cold glass. Be careful. I didn't mean I was afraid, but... I know what you meant. Anything else? Never leave a burner burning when you're not there. If you have to leave your workstation, turn it off and turn on gas, too. And there are a lot of highly flammable materials like alcohol in every chemistry lab. They should never even go near a flame. Fire! That's right, Mia. There could be a fire. No, Adam, there's a fire over there. Whoa! But look, there's a fire extinguisher. They're all over it, and it's out. Wow. Let's look at that again from another angle. The fire is going to be here. Here is the extinguisher over here. When the fire starts, this kid goes for the extinguisher while this one clears the area. Then, boom, in comes the extinguisher, and the fire is out. Now let it run. Fire. Everybody stand extinguisher. back. Extinguisher. Boom, textbook. Nice play. In fact, a perfect score. Is that the way it should work for all fires? Well, you might first try to put an inverted beaker or wet paper towels on top of a fire extinguisher is the way to do it. You should never throw water on a fire. Water can make the fire spread out, then you have an even bigger problem on your hands. It's a good thing that they knew where to find the fire extinguisher. Well, they should know where all of the emergency equipment is stored and how to use it. This includes the safety shower, fire blanket, eye wash station, fire alarm, and first aid kit. Down at the far end of the arena, we, we seem to have a breakaway. Look at him go. Hold on, he seems to be heading right for the sink. Oh, somebody's got to stop him. Interception. Did you see that? Boy, that could have been a costly penalty, Mia. You never pour chemicals down the sink. The judges seem to have let the near catastrophe go. What do you do with chemicals when you are through with them? Well, it varies from lab to lab, so you have to play by the rules of the home team. But there is always a system, and it should always be followed. And hey, these players should look for instruction if they don't know. Well, the experiments seem to be coming to their conclusions with a few minutes to spare, Adam. Roosevelt seems to be in a good position to take over the Chem Games lead. Will our competitors be content to just run out the clock? No way, Mia. There's still plenty of work to be done, and the judges will be watching it carefully. They still need to properly dispose of the chemicals, clean all of the glassware, and put all of the equipment away. Finally, it is crucial that they wash their hands. Wash their hands? Of course. Who knows what they have on them? What if they go to eat a sandwich right after the games are over? Or they have to wipe their eye? Better make sure they're clean. 
Well, Adam, we've come down to the moment of truth. Time to tally the score. While the judges confer, it's time to select our Chem Games play of the day. Yeah, and that's a tough one. We've seen good chemical handling and use, safe Bunsen burning, and good hand scrubbing and spill cleanup technique. Those are all candidates, but look at the way this guy puts out this fire. Whoa, if they win, it will be this perfect 10 that puts them over the top. That gets my vote. I'm with you. Unfortunately, we've also seen some of those things that can happen when you don't play smart. Like this joker, drinking from the lab equipment. Yeah, but we've seen that those things can be avoided if these folks just use good lab safety technique. Well, Roosevelt needs at least an 8.02 to take the lead. The judges give a 9.9 .9 for the cleanup for a final score of 62.71. That puts Roosevelt in the lead by nearly three points. Will it hold up? We'll find out next week as we travel to Brown High School to see if they can match the fine display of lab safety skills put on here at Roosevelt. Coverage of the Chem Games has been brought to you by Look Out Safety Gear and Apparel, who say if you're about to have an accident, look out. By Faro Fire Extinguishers, when you want it out once and for all. And by Looking Good Safety Goggles, who remind you that at the end of the day, if you can still see, you're looking good. For Adam Small, I'm Mia Beaker, saying so long from the Chem Games.